Hello chemistry people, Amy here. What I've got for you today is slightly different from my usual videos with Melbourne going back into lockdown. Um, what I thought I would do is put together a video showing you one of the experiments that we would be doing in class and that is Le Chatelier's position. Sorry, Le Chatelier's principle when we look at the position of equilibrium. If that doesn't quite make sense to you yet, that's fine. That's because I haven't talked about equilibrium yet. So what, what I've been spending my lockdown doing is watching far too many cooking videos on YouTube. So I'm just going to pause for a moment while I get my ingredient, sorry, reactants over here. They're not ingredients, we can't eat them. So what I'd intended to do was to show you what I've written on the board, which is our actual equilibrium ex um, equation. Mm -hmm. But I can see that the light conditions in this room aren't quite right. So what I'm going to do is later on, I'm going to insert a clip of myself talking about this equilibrium. So as promised, here is me talking about um, the equilibrium. So this equilibrium, as always, sorry, let me make my pen uh, the right colour. So the equilibrium we're looking at is if I have copper with six waters attached to it in two plus form aqueous, and I add four chloride ions to it, and again, that's aqueous. It can undergo an equilibrium where it then forms green co copper chloride. I will explain how the CuCl4 um, 2 minus, and for that matter, the hexa um, water, if you do HL. Okay, so the important thing to note here is that on this side, we've got blue. And as my equilibrium shifts right, I will see something that's more green. Now, th those two colours, again, that's something I'll talk about in HL. But that is the overall picture of what's happening in this equilibrium. So these are my reactants here. I've measured out enough copper chloride to make 250 CM3, roughly, of roughly one mole per DM3. So 250. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but that those crystals were a really lovely turquoise color. And once I added the water, they went blue. Now, that's sort of what we're going to be looking for in the course of this equilibrium. In addition to that, I need a saturated solution of sodium chloride. And I've also got a pre-made up bottle of silver nitrate solution. I have 0.5 mole per dm3 here, but you can go for a less concentrated. So let me just get my salt solution going. You do not need much at all of the salt solution. We're after just a couple of drops to put in our test tubes. In addition to all of that, I've got these itty bitty, these called semi-micro test tubes, but these are what I'm going to be doing to using to do my experiment. So there's two parts to this experiment we're doing today. Part one is going to involve changing the concentration of some of our species in our equilibrium. And part two, I'm going to be using an ice bath and a hot water bath. And you can't see where I'm pointing, but I am pointing over to a kettle that's just boiled off to the side. So I'm going to pause this video now, get these solutions prepped, my next step is going to be pouring this solution 
into my test tubes. So hopefully that stays reasonably stable. I am going to leave that far left test tube as a control. So in my second tube, I've just got my saturated sodium chloride solution. And I'm just going to add a couple of drops of my saturated sodium chloride solution into tube two. And hopefully this is enough to get, get me a change. So I'm just going to stop her and invert. No. Now, they are actually slightly different colors, but it's really hard to tell on the screen. Now, the issue at the moment is it's really quite cold in Melbourne. So not as much of my salt dissolved. Now that is slightly different. What I might do, I'm going to repeat this test just with less copper chloride to begin with. Okay, so just to show you that I'm not cheating, I've just put less copper chloride into that second test tube and I'm going to add that salty water. And yes, it will become slightly paler because there is less, fewer copper ions. But what I'm really after here is that shift from blue to green. That is a distinctly more green colour than the one next to it. Equilibrium is one of those topics that isn't terribly helpful to people who are colour blind, though. I am sorry if you fall into that category. Okay, so I just tried something and it worked quite well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my clean test tubes and I'm just going to spoon in some powdered sodium chloride and give it a shake. Now this is going to be messy. I am going to spill, but it is sodium chloride. So I'm less concerned than I would be if it was something else. So I've got my sodium chloride in there and you can see that it is going a distinctly greenish color at the bottom. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to, I've got my finger over the top and I'm just going to give it a bit of a shake. So we can see that now very distinct color change. So if I, this is, that's my control on the left. If I add salt, sodium chloride, it goes a very distinctly green color. The whole point of equilibria is that they are reversible reactions. So let's demonstrate that this process is reversible by taking some of the solution. Whoop, I didn't mean to pick up that. Taking some of my solution and then adding some of my deionized water. Sorry, you didn't see the label, but it is labeled as deionized water. So into tube three, I'm just gonna add some water and demonstrate that it goes back to being blue. So that reaction where I added the salt in tube two is now reversible when I add water to it in tube three. What I'm now going to do into tube four so remember, one is our control. I've added salt. I then added water. Tube four is at the moment untouched. I am going to add my silver nitrate. Now, what that silver nitrate is going to do, it is going to precipitate out the chloride ions. So you will see a sort of whitish sludge form at the bottom and we will see if there is a colour change. So we've got that whitish sludge that's formed. Let's do our thing where we give it a bit of a shake. So it is still that blue colour. What might happen though if I do my trick with turning my solution green and then giving it a go. So let's turn my solution green by adding 
some salt and again I know I'm spilling salt okay I have turned my solution green it's maybe not quite as green as my previous one but again this is all qualitative there is a way to do equilibria quantitatively it usually involves colorimetry for reasons that should be pretty obvious so i forced my solution into this green color like i did in test two let's see what happens to its color now when i add that silver nitrate okay so silver nitrate white precipitate forms invert maybe give it a bit of a shake to see now up the top of that tube where most of that precipitate is you can see that it is a bluer color than it was before so adding that silver nitrate and that is a particularly unappealing look with all of that silver chloride settling to the bottom so this is what i started with this plain blue i've then added salt turned it back into that blue color it's a little bit paler because it's more dilute than it was if i take that blue um, copper chloride and just add silver nitrate i get my precipitate but nothing else happens if i take my green copper chloride and add silver nitrate it becomes bluer again i get that sludge down the bottom but it does become bluer than it was so that's how we can mess with the concentrations in an equilibrium let me just stop this video for a moment reset slightly and then we can talk about what happens with temperature okay so what we're going to do now is we are going to look at the effect of temperature on equilibrium just like before and in fact it's exactly the same test tube i have my control and then i've got a container of hot water this has just come out of the kettle it's actually quite pleasant to be around it on a winter's morning in melbourne and then off on the right i've got a container with some ice water so i'm going to take my two test tubes they are the same color slightly different volumes but as i said this is a qualitative analysis not a quantitative and i'm just going to pop them in the two samples of water and this goes fairly quickly so let's wave them about a bit in the for a bit in the water And I'm showing you this in real time so you can see how quickly these things change. So I've got my hot on the left, my cold on the right, and now my control in the middle. So again, it's comparative and I again I apologize to people who are color blind, but this test tube on my left, particularly if I refresh it slightly, is much greener than my two on the left. Just to demonstrate, I've taken my hot one and I'm now putting it in the ice water. And that has brought it back to the same color. So the application of heat shifts that equilibrium towards that green side. Okay. Thank you. I might switch back to my computer camera now. So thank you. That was a quick rundown of Le Chatelier's principle by doing a demonstration with copper chloride. What I might prepare for us for the next one of these experiment videos I do, I might put together a gaseous equilibrium for us to have a look at so we can look at pressure and volume and how that can shift equilibrium. Um, 
If you've got any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I have disabled comments appearing automatically. I need to approve them. It's because I got a couple of ones that were spammy and inappropriate for me to be having on a, chat, a channel that I'm directing students to. So if you've got questions, please do feel free to reach out to me. And thank you so much. Have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye.